fabulous show. Alaska. I heard be Alaska. And it's hard. <laughs> Alaska. Pull up a chair and enjoy the show. You can hear it from Sitka to Barrow. Gather around for Jeannie's show. It's the alley. and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News, Native Information. I'm Jeannie Green. It's whaling season. Fall time whaling is going on in the north. And today we head out onto the Arctic Ocean and find out exactly what goes on in a whaling camp. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Brown's Electric Lighting Gallery. Thank you, Brown's Electric, for your generous support of Heartbeat Alaska. Heartbeat Alaska is made possible by Kupik Carlisle Transportation, your full-service transportation and logistics company. Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by Frontier Flying Service. Thank you, Frontier, for getting Heartbeat Alaska airborne. Barrels Village Corporation, Ukbiavik and Ubiak Corporation invited Jeannie Green Productions to Barrow. We went out on the ice and learned how the whaling tradition's values mirror those of the corporations. Ukbiavik means the place to hunt snowy owls. It's from this name that the Ukbiavik Inupiaq Corporation draws its name. Created in 1971 by the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act, the corporation is community owned by over 2,000 Inupiaq, adding deeper meaning to the word shareholder. Now one of Alaska's largest companies, Ukbiavik Inupiaq Corporation, offers a wide range of products and services throughout the world. Ukbiavik was renamed by Western explorers after British Admiral Sir John Barrow. It's easy to find Barrow on a map of Alaska. It's at the very northern tip of the state in fact, Barrow is further north than any other community on the continent. Should have enough room for everybody. Bana Edwardson is a tour guide for Alaskan Arctic Adventure Tours, owned and operated by Ukbiagvik Inupiaq Corporation. Is there plenty of room? He gets to show people around the top of the world every day. <laughs> is ready to rock and roll? I love 
that traffic light. It's the uh, best one in the world because it never changes color. It's green all year long. Well, one of the biggest misconceptions about uh, Barrow and us in Eskimo is that we live in igloos, but I tell them everybody, every single person that lives up here lives in an igloo because it means house. Another misconception is that we rub noses. We never rub noses. That post office is brand spanking new. It's a couple of years old. No such thing as mailmen here. In the wintertime, we have 65 days where you don't see the sun. That gets to them right there. They can't imagine that. And I tell them that's what drives most people out. In the, in the winter time, this place is not for everybody. But I tell them you can't have the sweet without the sour. You know, if you have 65 days of darkness, we have 86 days of sunlight, just like this, just like this, three o'clock in the morning in the summertime, 86 days straight. I love that too. We are pretty isolated, but we're completely self-sufficient up here. Well, you can only get here by plane. Alaska Airlines is the only carrier in and out, in or out of here. The Arctic is one of the harshest environments on the planet. There are no farms here, and no trees will grow this far north. Winter temperatures of 40 degrees below zero are common. For the Inupian, the tundra and the sea are bountiful sources of food. This land is our home. For generations, the Inupiat have followed their culture and lived in concert with the animals on the land and in the ocean. Since time immemorial, they have worked together to ensure the survival of their way of life. Each year during the spring and fall, bowhead whales migrate past Barrow and the hunt begins. By now, you may be wondering, how do you catch a whale anyway? Well, uh, obviously, we don't use 20-pound tests, that's for sure. What we do is we go out there to the edge of the ice. You can see the edge of the ice out there. And all of our 51 crews will set up their camps out there at the edge of the ice with their equipment, their tent, their boats, both the Umiak or skin boat and, a, and an aluminum boat with a motor. And uh, they set up in different locations. And since we have our Umiaks, we cannot go chase after every whale that we see. We have to wait for a whale to give itself to us. So once the uh, crew members are waiting by the boat and they see a whale come to us, they'll jump in the water and we'll paddle out toward, towards the whale and we'll take it with our hand-thrown harpoon. We have to get within about five feet of the whale. And after the whale is taken, what we do is we tow the whale from the kill site to the campsite and then we anchor uh, a number of blocking tackles or pulleys onto the ice and we pull the whale out of the water by hand. Here you go, here you go! Oh. Takes up to... 150 people and up to 12 hours just to pull it out of the water. And once it's on top of the ice, we continue to butcher the whale. That takes up to another 12 hours right there. And every single person that goes out to help, you know, they don't have to, uh, they don't get paid with money. They get paid with food. It's subsistence lifestyle. How we set up is uh, we uh, try to, we're set up at the point. Right Max Ogiak is the president of Ukbiavik Inupiat Corporation. On most days, you can find him in UIC's headquarters here in Barrow. During whaling season, however, he may be a bit hard to get hold of. And then, and then we have to have our, our blind, I mean, where we wait. And the guy's guy sitting over there waiting for the uh, whale to come up, and we're all we stand guard and be ready like that. Uh, we got a few spotters here and there that uh, travel, are looking for. Uh, Whales to come up, and so we'll be ready. To... Max is also a member of the Sagana Whaling Crew. We caught up with him at the whaling camp about eight miles outside of Barrow at the edge of the sea ice. Well, when we see a whale come by, we always have our, our guy, one of our harpooners, and Billy's been a bit of a harpooner. He gets in the front of the boat and, uh, and a gunner, and we kind of wait for the whale to come up, and when the, when the whales. Right there under the boat, we don't really do nothing. He just harpooned it and, and just shoots it. But if he's, if he's coming out, we get ready to shove out, and everybody just kind of gets around the boat and then, uh, be ready to just shove out when the, uh, when the harpoon is when when just in motion like that, and the motion like that, and we just shove out and take off. That's pretty much how we are. And then we have our other gear back there in case the whale comes up past the boat. 
we've got those weapons back there that we run, run to and then uh, harpoon it from the ice. Okay, this is our skin boat and the float right here. The float for the uh, for the harpoon that's right there. It's got the uh, the, the, the harpoon in front of it and it's got the lance and a trigger that um, we have to throw the harpoon first to the whale. And then there's this uh, whaling gun right here. Yeah. That we use uh, after the uh, the whale's been struck with a harpoon. And uh, with these are, I guess they are developed in the 1800s. Now we're still using them. They still do the purpose. Yeah, that should be exposed to start right into the whale there. And this is our, our what we call our bomb box. We got keep all our bombs in there. one here is for the uh, for the harp for the harpoon there and that and that uh, each harpoon got a I mean uh, each bomb got a mark of the captain this one got uh, EI that's uh, captain's name Edward Ita. and this one here is uh, for a shoulder gun bomb you know it's got these fins on it uh, right now they're tied together so they won't get bent up uh, when you when you're handling them, then you take the string off and you put it in the shell. That's the uh, the bomb for the uh, the shoulder gun. The purpose of the bombs is to kill the whale as humanely as possible. Yep, I mean, you you aim for the vital part. You give you try to shoot at the neck or the brain or. You go for the heart or the or the main main organs of the whale. So try to do an instant kill. I mean, uh, be, uh, we prefer an instant kill. That way we save the meat and the muck duck, so it'll be easier and better eating for everybody. The whole purpose of uh, catching the whale is uh, feeding feeding the whole town. And the more efficient you are, the better food that you serve the community. And, uh, Seven, seven days of waiting and seven seconds of glory. That's pretty much what it is, because uh, once, once you get on that well, you forget all about time, all about whatever. Sometimes you don't even know what you did. You just go out there and do it. So a lot of fun. A lot of fun, but dangerous. The various crews stay in contact by radio. Everyone on the ice works as a team to track whales. We, uh, VHF radio is our main source of communication down here, like uh, when our crew down further down the coast uh, spot the whale, depending on where it's at, if it's in the water or close to shore, they let us know it's coming so we're, we stand ready uh, when it uh, comes our way so we won't get surprised. A lot of times, you know, you know the harpoon gets in the front of the boat. Uh, uh, depending on how far away the camp is and how big it is, it must, uh, they used to take about maybe 45 minutes or half an hour. They stay under, so we kind of time it to see uh, when it might be coming up. And when the time comes up, uh, we start looking. Everybody's got to bear binoculars and go kind of scout around, see where it's going to go. And stand ready. Yeah, we have to be quiet. Turn the radio down. Tell the guys in the tent to be quiet down. And and whenever we can, we try to let the other camps know that the snow machine, because the echo of the snow machine carries a lot, goes a long ways under the ice, and kind of spooks the whales out. So we're trying Good to. Afternoon. Everybody's got to pretty much the same belief that. Uh, when the whales are running, they try to stay put. No machine, no no snow machining, and um, pretty much stay close to the boat.
This is our walking stick. We use this point to check, see how thick the ice is. If it goes through, if it goes through the ice, it's not really safe to walk on. And we have a hook on this side. There's a hook on the one, one end of it, so if you fall through, you can use this to keep yourself from sinking. And you use the hook to pull yourself out of the, out of the water. So that's uh, one of the, uh, the tools that we use when we're out walking on the ice just to make sure that we're walking on safe ice. We call it a walking stick. Hi, my name is Stephen Ballard Watson. My first name is Kolika. This is my uncle Edward Crew Sutherland. We're down about seven miles from Hollywood, waiting for whales. Uh, I'd like to say hello to all my friends all over Alaska. Vietnam veteran, roughneck, small businessman, family man, governor, independent, effective leader. Tony Knowles. In Washington, he'll work to create jobs, reach across party lines to promote oil and gas development, make prescription drugs and health care more affordable, even standing up to his own party to protect Alaska jobs. Putting Alaska first, Tony Knowles. I'm Tony Knowles, and I approve this message to Alaskans. Flying in Alaska? Fly Frontier, the official airline of Heartbeat Alaska. Frontier is expanding again. They've added new routes to Nome, Kotzebue, and the surrounding villages. As you can see, Frontier is now really covering Alaska. So the next time you fly, try Frontier. Frontier offers quick, convenient check-in, low fares, and service direct to many of the villages. Frontier Flying Service is the official airline of Heartbeat Alaska. Make it your official airline, too. God has put together a program just for you. Come and rejoice in the Lord. October 30th and 31st, we'll be holding another We Win taping at the Anchorage Friends Church. You are invited to Alaska's only National Alaska Native Christian Television Ministry, We Win. There will be native foods from across the state. Be sure to try Eugene Blatchford's recipe for homemade reindeer stew. Tapings begin at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, both days. That's October 30th and 31st at the Anchorage Friends Church. Come and be part of We Win, world evangelism with indigenous nations. For generations, the Chupik Eskimos of Nunavak Island have maintained the finest herd of reindeer anywhere in the world. The flavor and nutrition of these magnificent free-range deer is unmatched and is now available in commercial USDA-inspected lots. This is the only official outlet for authentic Nunavak reindeer meat. For more information or to place an order, contact Nunavak Meat Reindeer and Seafood Products, Box 42, McCorriak, Alaska, 99630, or call 907-827-8015. Supplies are limited. Sometimes sitting at a whaling camp takes patience. You may wait for hours, hours that turn into days, but when the crew strikes a whale, the word travels fast. While at a camp, word comes over the radio that the Butkada crew has struck a whale. Soon the whale is the talk of the town, and folks are speeding out to the Butkada's camp to help pull it in. There was uh, three boats out there in the general area, and. Uh, Oliver Barber crew and Don Numas crew were chasing after this whale. And they were behind it. We sat there, we waited quietly. It was coming straight forward for us. And when it came up close by, we started oaring real slow, quietly. Crawford Pukduk is the co captain of the Pukduk crew. Like all the crews here, they use a traditional skin boat and oars to hunt the bullhead whale. And just approached the guide when we got to it, it noticed us and it started to dive, and that's when we struck it. That first spot over there? It was a pretty safe strike. We didn't get caught by the flukes or anything like that. <laughs> It's just now cutting off where, the, where we harpooned it. It was about two feet behind the eye, and 
I think we got it just a little bit too far forward. If we were back about another foot, it would have been a, a kill shot. But it wounded it uh, pretty bad to where it didn't um, take off very far. So it was a pretty good shot. And at the same time, we harpooned it. We were out there oaring about three miles out with a skin boat. And uh, we struck it with the harpoon and the gunner. Howard was the gunner. And uh, it went about a mile. And we used about five bombs total. Some on to this side. Killed the whale. And went up about, up about another mile further out. And uh, everybody in Barrow will be able to eat plenty of uh, muktuk. We'll be getting ready for the Blanketas uh, whale feast, uh, probably at end of June, where we'll have uh, Mickey up prepared. And if there's airs uh, before Nalukaduk, everybody's welcome to come up to Barrow and have a taste of whale. Uh, they'll be cooked, fermented, uh, muktuk, and whatnot. So everybody's welcome. And that's what it's all about, to feed the community. No hungry stomachs. Thank God for that. Hauling a 46-ton whale out of the ocean and onto the ice is no easy task. It's still done in the traditional way. The people of Barrow pull together to get the job done. I, I'd just like to uh, add that, uh, first of all, I thank God that we were able to successfully land a whale. It's a privilege to be a part of it. It's a humbling experience. Thank God for that. <clears throat> when the whale is on the ice, the traditional cheer of hey, hey, hey echoes across the ice. Grab a few more, Dad. <laughs> hey, Christopher. The first of the boiled mukta is passed out. I choose one, Nakura, Mick, Nick and Lord, and I choose after me, Captain. Got it, didn't This is the fresh part that was just cut off from the whale to serve the people that are exhausted, probably a little bit hungry, that enrichment, enrichment that they need right now, and they really want to enjoy. Amen, amen. And have a bite, enjoy. <laughs> These traditions form the foundation of Ukbiavik Inupiat Corporation. What we're, what you were trying to do now nowadays you, at UIC is uh, trying to make in the, within the companies that we've got to bring back to the community um, jobs and some kind of uh, economic base and uh, for our, our shareholders to have and to be able to sustain our our community to support their um, cultural activities. We understand the importance of helping communities to maximize their potential. At UIC, we understand the second nature of land to its peoples. We value economic opportunity as a means to maintaining healthy communities and the survival of native ways of life. Our history and our culture teach us that working together is vital to the success of any endeavor.
Hello, my name is Bill Ita. I'm a harpooner for Edward Ita Screw up here in Barrow. I'd like to say hello to Heartbeat Alaska, to all my friends, and especially to the people in Fort Yukon. Hello. We'll be right back. Vietnam veteran, roughneck, small businessman, family man, governor, independent, effective leader. Tony Knowles. In Washington, he'll work to create jobs, reach across party lines to promote oil and gas development, make prescription drugs and health care more affordable, even standing up to his own party to protect Alaska jobs. Putting Alaska first, Tony Knowles. I'm Tony Knowles, and I approve this message to Alaskans. Dear Richard, Dear Richard, this is really hard to write. Dear Richard, people are starting to talk about you. I'm sorry, but I have to say something. Hey. Uh, call me later, OK? Yeah. Dear, Richard, Dear Richard, please, just listen. It takes a lot of guts to talk to your friends about their problems with marijuana or drinking, but it could make all the difference. In rural Alaska, we depend upon the rivers and the land for our subsistence. We depend upon our past to guide us into the future. We depend on Toyo stove to keep our families warm. They're very efficient over the old type oil stoves that we used to have before. Rural Energy Enterprises offers a wide variety of heating solutions for your home like the Toyo Stove Laser 73 and Godan Boreal. It's so efficient and it keeps our house, you know, nice and cozy. You don't need no electricity. And you can also cook on it. And you can pull the top up and then you can cook on it. And the burner is designed so that it's more efficient than the old type oil burners. They're priced well. You save money on heating fuel. It's a big plus in our village. Rural Energy Enterprises helping Alaskans save energy since 1987. Thank you so much, Ukbiavik Inupiaq Corporation from Barrow, Alaska, for sharing your culture, sharing your news with the viewers of Heartbeat Alaska, viewers that stretch from the top of Canada to the tip of Florida. God bless all of you. Join me again next week when we travel to remote Alaska for more Heartbeat Alaska. Yeah.